Hey everybody, it's Luke over at Galaxy Tech Review, and today I've got a product from GooD. This is their YG600 Plus native 1080p projector. This includes Bluetooth 5.2 for hooking up uh, speakers or other Bluetooth devices, and it also has Wi-Fi built in as well, and it is dual band Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. We're going to dig into this now. And I'll be right back. Okay, so once you get everything out of the box, it comes in a carry slash storage case, which is very nice. Uh, I'm glad to see this. This is something that you can store this in between uses, or if you're going to take it somewhere, uh, you can uh, put it in here and it will have its own bag, which is great. Now you get some documentation here and a few uh, cleaning stickers, cleaning supplies uh, for cleaning the vents. Uh, they're basically, you know, just Q-tips, uh, but you can clean the vents that way, uh, and they and they supply it, which is really nice. Now it does give you a quick start guide and a full user guide here. Uh, it is written in English. It is well laid out, and it is not micro print, so you're not going to need a magnifying glass to read it. Uh, so I would definitely hold on to this if you need to reference anything. Uh, taking a look at the accessories that we get, first off we have a remote here, and this is a pretty standard remote. Uh, it does take two AAA batteries that are not included, so you will have to supply those on your own. Uh, but the remote itself is nice. It's it's not huge and it's not small. It's kind of just the right size. You've got your Bluetooth control there. You've got your back button, menu button, home button, volume controls, and selection, and so on. You get a legacy AV cable for older devices that will take uh, audio-video connections to the projector. You get a, a two-prong to two-prong power cable for uh, supplying power to the YG600+. Plus. Uh, so uh, no problems there. And you do get an HDMI cable as well included, uh, so you do have that. Okay, so let's take a look at the main unit itself. And I like the way that this is designed. It's not your typical just straight box. They've got some curved edges to it. It's got that black and gray, so it looks really good too. It is made out of plastic for the most part. Uh, you can see that we can remove the lens cap on the front here, and it's got a nice big lens. Now, this is a native 1080p projector, and it will uh, support 4K video files as well, so you won't have any problems with 4K playback, as you'll see in my test a little bit later. Uh, it does 600 ANSI lumens, uh, so you're going to have some good brightness to this as well. On the top, we've got all of our uh, major buttons like your power, back, a menu. You also have two rings, one for focus and one for keystone adjustment. Uh, so you can do that manually there. Now on the back, we do have our power uh, in. We also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack out for external speakers or headphones, depending on how you want to do that. You do have your AV uh, jack there as well. As two full HDMI ports and two full USB ports as well for something like a flash drive or uh, whatever you would want to plug in to play files or media back uh, through that. And on the sides, you do have some venting on both sides, but again, I really like uh, the kind of the footprint here is really nice. It's got that curved design to it and that black and also uh, your gray kind of two-tone color. You do have a leveler here that you can level out. And on the left-hand side, we also have a removable dust filter. So you can pop this out uh, and you can actually uh, remove the tray and then you have a dust filter in here that can be cleaned. This is important and I'm glad that they include that in this uh, so that you can uh, keep your unit clean. Okay, so taking a look at the main interface here on the left-hand side, you can see we've got uh, inputs, HDMI 1 and 2 and AV, and uh, you have all of those for quick inputs if you need to. Along the top, we've got iOS Cast for casting your iOS devices 
to this via Wi-Fi and Miracast for Android so you will have the ability to do iOS devices or Android devices. You can select movies, music, photos, and there is even a built-in office suite as well for documents if you do uh, want to, uh, you know, use this as a presentation device for, uh, you know, Word or Excel or meetings or something like that, you can do that as well. Now, looking up at the top, you can see we have a Bluetooth icon, we've got our Wi-Fi, we've got a USB icon, and of course our settings. So we're going to kind of dive a little deeper into this. This is built on Android 9, but the first thing that we want to take a look at is our Wi-Fi settings, Bluetooth settings, projection settings system updates, and other settings. Looking at Wi-Fi, uh, of course, you want to be connected via Wi-Fi for uh, screen mirroring and also for, um, you know, uh, just faster updates, over-the-air updates. It does support 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so I'm going to uh, quickly connect to my uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi here and now I am connected and ready to go. So it is good that it supports a faster Wi-Fi speed. I really do like that a lot. Now if we uh, move on to Bluetooth settings, this is where you'll be able to turn your Bluetooth on and add uh, either Bluetooth speakers or something like that for extra sound. Now this has uh, two 5-watt uh, speakers that are uh, Dolby speakers or Dolby authorized is what they are saying. And this uh, does a very good job with its own speakers, which you will hear in our test in just a few moments. Uh, but you can add other speakers through Bluetooth settings right here if you would like to. Now under projection settings, we've got a bunch of different things. Projection mode, and this is going to flip or mirror your image depending on whether you have this mounted from the ceiling or something like that. You can change it here. In Keystone Advanced, we can do a few things. You can just use manual Keystone, or you can switch it to side and have four-point Keystone, which means I can select uh, each individual corner and then use the arrows to uh, adjust each corner if I want to. So if you're going to be projecting this on a difficult surface, uh, you'll be able to easily do it. Moving on, we also have um, your vertical and horizontal keystone in manual, of course, and we do have digital zoom as well, which is really nice uh, if you need uh, a smaller screen or you're in a smaller space, you can zoom in on the picture and you'll see how that works. We're at 100% now and I can zoom in or out depending on uh, what I'd like for that. So if I have it set up in a, a kind of a set spot and I need to make the picture a little bit smaller, then I can do that with digital zoom. System updates can be done locally. This is where you can also do a, a restore of the two factory settings, or you can do an online update. My projector at this time is on the latest version, so I am good to go. If we take a look at one step back here, we will also see other settings, and this is where you can do your boot source option. So if you always want it to boot uh, automatically to HDMI 1 or 2 or AV, then you can. Off is just going to take you to the home screen. You can do a power on option of direct or standby. You do have multiple languages to use here, and this is great if English is not your primary language. You do have a scheduled shutdown or sleep timer here, and it goes from 10 minutes all the way up to 120 minutes. So if you are going to, say, watch a movie or something before you're going to bed and you want it to shut off in, say, a certain amount of time, you can, of course, set that there. Now, of course, this is set up for iOS Cast or Miracast for Android. Uh, if you go into iOS Cast, it's going to show you that you can just uh, go to your control center and then look for the devices to be mirrored on, and you will select the YG600 Plus uh, 1563, which is the one that mine is. Yours will be different. Same for Android as well. Uh, we'll be using a Wi Fi display technology. Same thing. You're 
you're going to go, uh, and I have my S22 Ultra, which I will quickly mirror here. Just go to Smart View on my phone and then uh, select the uh, YG600 Plus. And as you can see, my screen is up there, no problems whatsoever. Uh, it's very responsive, don't have any problems with that. If I turn it in landscape, I'm going to fill the entire screen and it looks very good. Uh, I can uh, do things such as uh, check out YouTube or maybe that's what we'll do here and you guys can hear uh, what it's like when it's running. This is just great for being able to watch videos on uh, any platform that isn't already installed on your phone or tablet. Luke over at Galaxy Tech Review and today we're going to talk about how to clone your existing OS drive, be it a uh, hard drive or an SSD, to a Samsung SSD, either SATA or M.2. Today we're going to use the 960 EVO, which I recently installed in a PC that I'm using now. So we're going to use a Samsung migration, and this works only for Samsung drives. So if you're cloning your OS drive or your main drive to your newly installed SATA SSD or M.2. So that's how uh, the mirroring works for uh, Android at least. And you can see that we had no problems playing back uh, YouTube videos. Uh, so that is uh, the coverage for mirroring. Okay, so let's take a look at local files. I do have a USB flash drive plugged in here, and I have a 4K file that I want to play back and show you guys the actual quality that you'll get uh, from this and any tweaks that we can make to the picture as well while playing a local files back. Uh, and there are some that we can do. So I do have a, a test of a clip of Fortnite here and we're gonna run that real quick uh, so that you can see and hear how this sounds uh, on this particular projector. Okay, so the two 5 watt speakers do a really good job here. You can see that we've got some good color representation on this as well. The 600 uh, ANSI lumens do a good job at illuminating uh, the screen, uh, even in lighter environments. Now, this isn't a fully dark room, uh, but you would definitely be able to uh, use this in uh, a room that does have background lighting on it, no problems whatsoever. Now, you can see that we can adjust uh, a few different things with the picture, uh, subtitles, uh, and a few other things as well. Uh, so you can see uh, that we can go in uh, to track settings, and we can also uh, switch our audio audio tracks, our display modes, and we can uh, either do a 16 by nine or auto uh, or four by three. And then we have other things such as picture and in the user modes, there are some preset modes here like standard and vivid uh, and things like that. And if you go into user, you can adjust all of these things individually and really tailor the picture to exactly how you like to see it yourself because 
everybody is subjective. So overall, uh, you've got a lot of functionality here and a lot of control over your picture and of course your sound settings as well, like your treble and your bass. Uh, but you can see at Vivid is uh, really vivid here uh, with uh, cranking the contrast up to 80%. Now as far as the sound goes, uh, that sound was from the two 5 watt speakers and it was at 75%. Uh, so you could hear a little bit of the fan noise, but the speakers are pretty powerful in this and they didn't bother me at all and the camera was right next to the unit. So it did an excellent job here as well. So that's my review of the Goody uh, YG600 Plus. This projector has a lot of features in it. It's a native 1080p, supports 4K video playback, two 5 watt speakers that are Dolby authorized, which are very nice at drowning out any fan noise that you might hear. Now it also supports Bluetooth and dual band Wi-Fi. Uh, the dual band Wi-Fi comes in handy, especially with the screen mirroring feature and gives you a faster and more solid of a connection. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this particular projector and I'm gonna give it a thumbs up myself. This was Luke from Galaxy Tech Review and I'll check you guys out on the next one.